This is the S&P 500 Spider ETF SPY one month overview reading for February 2024. It's currently December 19th, 2023, 1.35 p.m. Eastern time. SPY at the time of this reading is $474.04, that's USD. And the shuffle video that we're about to play for you for the February reading was created on December 5th, 2023 at 3.10 p.m. Eastern time. That's this video here in the corner. So the overall theme and behavior for SPY in the month of February 2024, there's an important support level highlighted that it'll be important on it on like a one year chart scale, maybe even a multi year chart scale, important support level. There's also the universal hexagram energy, which is cross reading congruency. When we take a look at the one year for 2024 here in February, at the beginning of February, we have the appearance of the universal indicating that there's a significant drop um, off of a, a peak somewhere around February. It could be that February rallies and then we drop in the next month, or it could be that the drop is in February. We'll, we'll get into that uh, as we progress through the reading. Um, but a really, really strong cross-reading congruency. I've also seen this universal in the theme card position in several other, not just one other, several other February readings. Very, very strong integration of a pivotal moment. Um, now the theme here, this, that's important support is, is also crossed with a period of sideways rotation in which there's a sharp drop and that sharp drop takes us to revisit a support level that was recently a past opportunity in the midst of that sideways rotation. Uh, behavior around the high for the month, we have a period of sideways rotation that ends with a fast sudden move higher. Behavior around the low for the month, we have uh, a rally that comes to an end within close time proximity to the low. So like a multi, like a multi day kind of rally that'll end within close proximity to the low indicating that we probably have some sort of sharp drop off of a high but that's, that's speculation at this point we'll see when we get in more detail here um, now before we go any further i want to make sure everybody's aware the whole purpose of the channel is to transmute some of the competitive energy of the stock market into goodwill we do that by following the rule of karma for the channel which is the unwritten agreement between anybody utilizing this information for personal gain and the universe the universe expects you to follow through on the rule of karma which is here on the resources tab of our website tarot for traders five percent of the profits from every profitable trade utilizing this information information uh, should be donated forward to one of these charities. Imagine if everybody in the stock market that made money took 5% and put it towards something good for the world. How much better would the world be? So we can at least start that trend. We can do a bit of that together as a team. Uh, also, the, the channel needs your support. So 5% of the profit should also go back to the channel. That's really in essence 10% tithing, which is one of the uh, most important rules of wealth. You can find that in the richest man of Babylon, the 10 principles of wealth tithing. So that leaves you at 90%. Make sure to spend that money out of love. As long as you follow those rules, you follow the rule of karma for the channel. The universe can considers you an angel investor and it's going to send it back to you tenfold for following through blessings to all my angel investors let's get back into it each of these cards going from left to right across the street they're numbered these represent trading days of the month right it's important to understand that not each card's energy is going to perfectly line up with 24 hours of time so you have to give plus or minus uh one day of wiggle room here or there in some cases occasionally it's plus or minus like two days i consider that a bad reading and then often there's no plus or minus needed at all but you want to keep that in mind the most important thing to follow here is the prediction in terms of the sequence of chart events as predicted that sequence will remain accurate even if we are plus or minus at some point or another throughout the reading important to understand that and also remember guys it's really easy to think that i'm right all the time when you come on and you're new and you see how i'm right and then i'm right and then i'm right and then i'm right don't be that guy that's like oh i can never be wrong let me bet everything on the house and then lose it all and blame it on me don't be that fool okay i'm not right all the time remember that with that said i'm right a lot of the time all right so here on the first we have a cross reading congruency on the daily what do i mean by the cross reading congruency here on the daily we've got the knight of discs appearing which is the high card of the one month it appears in the daily reading early in the day on the first indicating that we may see a high here like on a one month it'll probably be our first high and we sell off from that pretty notably we probably have a highest high thus far and a lowest low thus far within close time proximity to the first Right, so I'm just picking up on this um, as something that transfers from the January reading, a trade opportunity there. So after a sharp drop, it looks like we may come back to a higher point than what we see here in January, it's very likely. We have this decline from a near overbought crest or peak through multiple support levels on the first, rallying on the second. Rally on the second offers an opportunity to close out of a long position, open up a short position in, in the midst of a move higher through key resistance on a one day chart. And then uh, we stay above that resistance briefly. And then we break back down through that same price level shortly thereafter, making kind of like a triangular shape peaking through that resistance. On a one day chart, that's probably where I would enter into a short position or close a long position. Very likely we open lower on the fifth, all right, so my sense is that we probably open lower or we're lower on the fifth at some point than we were on the second. And then there's this notable move to the upside. We might very well see the same high that we had on the first second, probably at more so on the first, but we probably see the same high, it might see higher behavior on the sixth. We have this pop and drop, we move higher. And then there's just a quick retracement of that back down. Matter of fact, we probably have a low around the morning of the 6th. On the 7th, we have a rally increasing with momentum moving forward in time. Yeah, see that universal and that universal? And there's a, there's another one coming up here. 
This is like a major cross street incongruency. We're coming very close to a sharp drop here. We go from like a low here into like this pop and drop on the 6th, and then this rally on the 7th that increases with momentum taking us into what is either the same highest high that we saw already, or it'll be a higher one. And then from that overnight and or the following day, there's this sharp decline that increases with the momentum moving forward in time. And we see low correlations again here on the 8th. So it's, this is probably the same low, lowest low or a lower one at this point, it's possible. We have price swings here from the, the decline and into the ninth price swinging going on. And we probably see our lowest low thus far for the month, likely lower than what we've seen thus far. It'll be the lowest low thus far for the month here on the 9th. So I think we probably open higher on the 12th and there seems to be some price swinging in the morning, but more so it looks like a rally in the morning. Actually, it's pretty mixed here. Wild price swings going on here in the morning. And the, the, the low is really hard to place. The low and the higher within close time proximity to each other. So it might be that there's a low here, a high, a low, and then a, a high. Oof, hard. We open higher on the 12th and it's pretty mixed overall, I think, to the upside. But there's like this halting of the bullish trend marked by a sharp decline on the 12th. And then we're back into bullish trend. It, there's a low cross reading congruencies on the 13th. In the morning, there's also a high cross reading congruencies on the 13th. So I think probably a lot of price change ground covered to the upside with sideways rotation, then a big move higher taking us to a peak or crest. I don't think it'll be a highest high. It'll be a peak or crest. Maybe the same. If this is a higher price level, then maybe it'll be like the same as the ones from like the second or the fifth. Either way, it's a prominent peak. I don't think it's a highest high. It's a prominent peak. And then we go into like this significant significant drop um so this is most likely where we have our lowest low for the month so there's like a sharp drop i'm trying to pinpoint where it is but it looks like there's probably a pretty sharp drop off of the high here on the seventh another one over the weekend so we might open actually lower i think there's probably a significant drop here overnight on the ninth like in the eighth into the ninth we probably open lower or we're lower at some point on the 12th we have this prominent peak on 13th but we also have a trough so that's going to be like mixed somewhere between the 12th 13th there should be a trough the lowest low thus far and also like a prominent peak uh, and then we go into a lowest low for the month that'll remain the lowest low for the month here on the 14th rallying out of the 14th into the 15th trade opportunity there this is a really strong cross reading congruency here the death card it's the the low correlator card on the february cluster of the one of the one year it's preceded by the unicursal that's most likely where we have our lowest low for the month there should be a, at least one or two sharp drops in here between the 7th and the 14th but it's looking really mixed so if we don't end up having like the sharp sharp drop there then what will very very likely happen is like at the, the beginning of march we'll probably see like some really sharp drop but i think we probably have a sharp drop here there's just a really strong cross reading congruencies we might revisit the lows on the 15th there's a lot of volatility there on the 15th and a trade opportunity there in the midst of like an unexpected move higher out of a low on a one day chart on the 16th we have an important resistance level that's highlighted on a multi-day scale that we failed to break through many times before and it looks like we declined from it into a trough at the end of the day a prominent trough on a one month scale yeah, so it looks like we probably have like this rally that starts on the 14th. Um, we open up a long position. We open up a long position at like this ace of cups or possibly at a low here around two o'clock and or right. If I do it at the low, I'd want to do it before like this move that pushes the upper end of a range higher. Definitely before this move that starts out of a decline and goes from the bottom of range to the top of range. But I'd probably open up a long there and then look to close that long midday here on the 15th before we have this retracement back down to that same price level that we rallied from on the 14th possibly the same price level and what it'll be is like a full retracement of whatever the move higher here on the 15th is not maybe not including the 14th but whatever move higher here on the 15th we see a retracement of that before we go any further let's take a look and see how we're doing on the december reading for spy all right so we have a highest high around the second and you can see that that took place that was a highest high thus far around the second third uh, and then we go into a lowest low on the sixth and that took place there's also a prominent trough on the first and you can see that took place then we go into higher price levels, cross reading congruencies on the 8th, the cross reading congruency, higher price level on the 11th, cross reading congruency. And then we have like a high on the 14th and you can see boom, high on the 14th. Then I said we likely would revisit that same high here on the 18th. And it's possible that we would revisit a high here on the 19th. And it looks like we've actually breached a little, a little bit. But for the most part, this is a very accurate reading. If we turn around and we start declining from here into the rest of the week, this remains accurate. And then next week is kind of like all bets are off. It's so complicated, this reading. There's highest highs and lowest low indications. There's just probably a lot of volatility and some really severe price swings here next week. Probably see a high at the beginning of the week if we do see another highest high and a low at the end of the week. But there might also be a high at the end of the week and a low at the beginning of the week too like it's it's crazy there's so much going on there anyhow this is a solid reading and you can see actually it's it's kind of uh it's probably no coincidence actually that i'm doing the february reading and reviewing the december the february readings theme card is the emperor card and you can see it's here as well so there's this important support level highlighted here right and sideways rotation along that support and then it, clearly we have like this break out of it but remember the highest high for the month is going to be a, a decline through multiple support levels we're very close to a high if not at the high guys you know, so be very mindful of that. Off of the low, there was a fast sudden move higher, and you can see that took place. As far as trades, I, I advise to open up a long position on the 6th. That was right there. Anywhere on the 6th, even if you got it at the worst possible time on the 6th, 
If you held it until the 8th, which was one of the locations advised to close out, you would have made money. If you held it longer as advised into the 13th, 14th, 13th, you would have made a ton of money. That's like 454 to 470. And then if you waited till the 14th as advised, 474. If you risked it and went all the way to the 18th, which I, t I said not to risk, but if you did, you would have still done pretty well pretty close to the highs and then we would have left a little bit on the table today it looks like but by tomorrow we should see these notable declines take into place you would have made a ton of money following the monthly um which guys if you're interested you can get this information way earlier this february reading is coming out on january 21st on the uh, publicly on youtube but it'll come out uh, as early as the 20th or the 21st of december on our early access on our website tarot for traders you can get early access there tarotfortraders.com under our services so meta posts click here to subscribe right here at the top and it's 29 bucks a month 249 for the year great way to support the channel we're anywhere between like two months and like two weeks ahead in most cases when we get behind we're like a few days ahead it happens occasionally but for the most part we're like a month ahead at least and you can see people are, are now in december who have early access are going to be watching february videos when everybody else is waiting until january so great way to support the channel thank you to everybody that goes and supports the channel that way much appreciation and don't forget, we've also got the dailies S&P 500s, which are for the most part very, very accurate. But if you want the most accurate readings you can get, you should really follow our live stream that we do every stock market trading day between uh, 3 p.m. and 4 p.m. Eastern time. Every single day, guys, you can ask all sorts of questions there. And then we are now doing frequently in the mornings as well, but that time kind of fluctuates. But that's where you get the most accurate readings, because if I'm off on something, I'll see it in real time and I'll talk about it in real time and, and recalibrate when occasionally I am off, you know? So we, we probably see some mixed behavior here on the 20th, because here on the 20th i've got the science card there's an important technical price level highlighted as far as sequence of events on the 20th we're at this resistance level area but i think we probably break out through that resistance there on the 20th i left out this situation with the uh, labradorite stone here so we have some sort of trough here like a buy opportunity here around the tw 27th or the 30th of january um, and it looks like if you held it until roughly the 20th, you'd be a happy camper. That indicates that we may have a highest high here on the 20th, like a higher price level than the 7th. It's possible. It's very likely based on that. When we go from like a prominent trough on the 20th into a notable move higher standing out on a one month chart there on the 21st and another prominent peak, maybe open lower on the 22nd. And we have a rally higher along a diagonal trend line, breaking through horizontal resistance and meet a second resistance before pulling back to somewhere between those two price levels. And we're at five of cups by the 22nd. So really we should see a failed attempt to break through key resistance there around the, the 22nd, 23rd followed by a decline through key support. And it'll be resistance that technicals will lead us to believe we're going to break through. They're probably like a pretty significant move early in the day on the 23rd to the upside to this resistance. And it's like a prominent crest on a one month scale. But instead we turn around and we decline through key support. And there's that universal energy here. So there might be a sharp drop off of this. It's possible like one of these two locations and or it could be both. If it's one of them, I'm very, very much leaning towards the ninth. By the 26th, we have a rally offering opportunity to close a short position. We probably see high ice highs again. It might be the same price level we've already seen, or actually it could be a higher price level at this point. It's possible. It depends on how much we return here on the 20th, 21st, 22nd. It depends on how much we return to the upside here on the 20th, 21st, 22nd kind of area, whether or not this ends up being a highest high here. Either way, it's a prominent peak here on the cusp of the 26th, 27th. And there's a sharp decline off of that peak on the 27th through multiple support levels. Decline continues into the 28th, but ends with a fast sudden move higher that starts on the 28th and leads into the 29th, where we have a key technical price level highlighted on a one month scale and a one day scale here towards the end of the day. It's highlighted. I mean, it looks like rally probably continues along a diagonal trend line into March, but I'm advised not to chase that rally. It ends with a fast sudden move higher and then a breakdown through that diagonal trend line with increasing volatility on the way down. From the standpoint of a 2024 one year chart scale, what we see here in February, we, we're probably revisiting the low that we saw in January and we're very likely also revisiting a high that we saw in January. Uh, so we want to be mindful of that as far as when looking at price levels. And it looks like there's an important support level on a one year chart scale highlighted around the 9th and then again around the 22nd. I don't think they're the same support level, but let's say that this right here on the 20th doesn't end up being a highest high for the month. It ends up just being a prominent peak and this remains the highest high for the month here on the 7th. Then I would say there's a good likelihood that we might revisit a support level somewhere there. It's possible. The other possibility is that this 26th is way higher than the 7th. I think this the 26th might actually be a new high, like a new high on a one month scale. It may be higher than this. The 7th high is going to act as a high for quite a bit of the month, but then I think we probably break out through that price level here on the 19th, 20th and continue into a higher price level on the 26th and that price level is probably the same high that we saw in January either that or the rally continues from January into the high here and this is the revisiting of that high those are like the two possible scenarios that I can see from our one-year chart scale view it looks like there's a trade opportunity at the high here uh, in February and it's so mixed there between January and February it's really hard to say but we should see a high it might be a slightly higher high actually in February than we see in January but it'll be close it'll be very very close and it might be that we see a slightly lower low in February as well. It's either that or it's gonna be the same low as January. So as far as like a multi-month swing trade, 
Um, there's a lo long position that could have been opened here around the 27th, 30th, um, and closed here around the ninth, uh, around the 20th, I should say. But that's after like some pretty wild behavior. And what's interesting is that I'm not getting a trade opportunity here. I'm getting a trade opportunity here. So I probably want to open up a partial short position here on the second. And then if we, and when we go higher here on the seventh, if we, if we do, I'd add to it. Or if we go to the same high, I'd add to it with the intent to close it. Well, you could close it short here on the fifth, or you could close it here on the 14th. I'd open up a long on the 14th and I would look to close that long at that resistance level on the 15th, 16th at a resistance level. We failed to break through many times before I'd probably close it there or hold it over the weekend to close when we break out here on the 20th. And it's possible that this ends up being an even higher high. So you might hold the long until the 26th. I'd probably hold the long until the 26th. Actually, you could close it on the 20th. You could close it on the 16th. You could close it on the 26th. Me personally, I probably hold it until the 26th. And then on the 26th, you could open up a short and close that short on the 28th um, in the midst of a decline before a fast sudden move higher. And if you don't want paid to see it early guys you can also get it earlier it's not as early as early access but you also get access to this spy one month reading every month it's emailed to everybody on our mailing list it's a free mailing list you go to our website tarofortraders.com and right here at the top sign up for our free newsletter and receive the s p 500 monthly just put in your email and subscribe we don't share your info with anybody it's purely to get the newsletter so you can do that or you get early access but most importantly guys make sure to follow that rule of karma it's the most important aspect of the channel it's the whole purpose of the channel why i'm putting on all this free content five percent of all profits from this information should be donated forward to one of the charities here on the resources tab of our website 5% of the profit should be donated back to the channel through one of these links. It, thank you very much. It helps support the channel and it's a good way to say thank you. Um, it leaves you with 90%. Make sure to spend that 90% out of love. As long as you follow those rules, you follow the rule of karma for the channel and you've successfully completed the goal of the channel, which is to transmute competitive energy of the stock market into goodwill. We're doing that with your help. And the more we grow, the more we're able to impact the world together as a team. Blessings to all my angel investors. I'll see you guys on the next one.